Hey everybody, it's Craig here from Mainstream Mountain Guy and Curated.com and I am in my kitchen, not going to be cooking up anything except for maybe a pair of boots. I'm going to show you today how to custom fit your liners and your shells if your shells are heat moldable. Almost every liner on the market these days is heat moldable. Most shells are too. So I'm going to show you how to do that at home. First of all, I want to say a couple disclaimers. Uh, your local ski shop probably has one of these special ovens that will uh, heat up your boots to just the perfect temperature. Everything will be covered by their insurance and all of that. So if you have that option, definitely take it to a local ski shop and do it there. Most of the time they do that for free. Uh, the other thing I want to say is if you follow my methods, you do everything I say I do and your boots get ruined, don't come and get angry at me. But I am gonna show you a way that is really safe. It's a way I've done it for all of my boots, all of my kids' boots. And um, I think you'll really benefit from it, especially if you live in a town like I do, where you're a ways away from a get good ski shop. So I'll show you how to do it. Go ahead and grab your boots. Let's get to work. So I'm just using my standard kitchen oven and I'm gonna go convection. 220 degrees. The reason I use convection on my oven is because there's a little fan in there that moves the air around and keeps um, hot spots from forming in your oven. Now, if you don't have a convection oven, you could still do this. You just have to preheat the oven. Make sure it preheats and that everything evens out and then you could go ahead and slide your boots in there. I have uh, taken my boots and I've taken the liners out of the shells and I've put them all on a baking dish and now I'm going to slide them into the oven. Now that the boots are in the oven, I set a timer for 17 minutes. I've got my ski socks on that I normally wear and uh, one thing that a lot of people do is um, if you want a little more toe room, you, what you do is you just get the uh, cut an end off of an old sock here. And uh, what you'll do is you'll place that over your foot. And then when you slide it in there, make sure it stays put. But you slide it in there and it's going to give you a little more toe room. Keep those toes a little warmer and let them move around a little bit. All right. When your timer goes off, go ahead and get in there and take the boots out. I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, boot liners back in. I put some old liners on because a lot of times those aluminum buckles on your boots can be very, very warm. I accidentally knocked my rear spoiler off here. I'll put that back on. Make sure that you get the right liner in the right boot. It's easy to do to switch them because everything's so pliable and malleable. Now that we're in our boots, we go ahead and cinch them up. And we don't go real tight, we just go our normal tightness. All right, my boots are on and uh, they are very warm, right? I, I, I could definitely feel it in there and I'm starting to sweat a little bit as my body is trying to cool itself off, but they shouldn't be burning you. It shouldn't be painful at all. If it's painful at all, you went too hot and uh, your oven needs to be <laughs> taken a look at. But um, I've got everything locked down about the tightness I have when I'm normally skiing. I've got my power strap on and my walk mode turned off. We're gonna do one more thing to make sure we get just the perfect fit. If you have a two by four, you're gonna to wanna to get that out and have that ready to go for you at this stage in the boot molding process. Um, at my house, I've got this little curb up that goes from carpet to hardwood floor. And so that's what I'm gonna use. And that's what I have my family use when we fit their boots. What I do now is I step up to that little inch and a half bump up 
I put some weight into the toes of my boot, just like I would be if I was initiating a new churn. And I stand here for about five minutes. All right, after you've done that inch and a half little toe up thing for about four or five minutes, kind of pressed in on your shins, go ahead and just continue to keep those boots on, wear them around for about another 10 minutes or so till they're nice and cool or back down to room temperature. And then your boots are set, shells and liners, and are ready to go. If there's something that happens, um, you're getting some pressure points or things like that, um, you could definitely, or you're, or you're not, maybe you didn't use that toe pack and you're like, you know what, man, I'm skiing on it. I wish I had more toe space, or I wish I would have put a thicker sock on and then ski with a thinner sock. You could always do this process over again. Now you can't do it over and over and over again, but most, um, ski boots say that they could be heat formed up to four or five times. So definitely check that out. Thanks so much for watching. And hopefully this was helpful for you. Once again, uh, like I always ask, please subscribe, please click like, and um, hit me up with any comments or questions. I'll do my best to answer those. If you have any corrections or maybe some things that you've done in the past that have worked really well that you wanna share with the community, definitely put those in the comments. Thanks so much. If you're interested um, in some ski gear, definitely click on my curated link. I'd love to hook you up with some really great ski gear. Guys, have a great season in those new boots. Really enjoy them and rip it up.